Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we will be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problem as if you're one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this practice problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Before we jump into this practice problem, I want to give you a quick analogy to help you better understand the principles of a circuit. I like to think about a circuit as being like a river. The current of a river is the flow of its water per unit time. Similarly, in a circuit, its current is the flow of electric charge per unit time. And when a river reaches a junction, the amount of water that is flowing per unit time will decrease, right? The water flowing through this break off and the water flowing through this break off is going to be less than the overall flow per unit time in the original river up here, right? So therefore, whenever you reach a junction, the current is going to decrease. And the same thing happens in a circuit. I like to think about the voltage as being like the altitude of this river. When you reach a junction, the altitude does not change. The voltage will remain exactly constant. Let's take this analogy one step further. I like to think about resistors as being like waterfalls. And in the practice problem that we were given, we have a resistor 1, a resistor 2, and a resistor 3. When water goes over a waterfall, it is not the flow of that water that decreases or increases. It's the altitude of that water that changes. Similarly, when the current in a circuit crosses a resistor, the current is not going to change. It's the voltage that change. The voltage drops as it goes across a resistor. And what I want you to notice is that the voltage drop across R1, R2, and R3 is all going to be the same because the change in altitude is the same for all three of these. The same thing will happen in our practice problem. We are told that the voltage for our circuit is 3.2 volts. We're also told that the resistance for R1 is 2.3 ohms, resistance for R2 is 6.5 ohms, and the resistance for R3 is 9.7 ohms. But we're only concerned with R3, so we really only need to focus on this resistance value, okay? And whenever we're doing this kind of calculation, we want to use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. This is definitely an equation that you're going to want to know for the MCAT. It comes up over and over and over again. And remember, we said that the voltage drop across all three resistors is going to be exactly the same. Therefore, we can just plug in 3.2 for the voltage. I is what we're solving for, current, and the resistance is 9.7 ohms. So now, we just divide by 9.7 on both sides, and we get current equaling about 0.33 amperes. And if you need help doing these kinds of calculations quickly in your head, be sure to check out my High Speed Math Mastery course. It'll walk you through doing any type of calculation that you need to do for the MCAT in a very simple, step-by-step -step manner. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Taking a second look at our answer options, it looks like answer choice D, 0.33, is the correct answer. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, please be sure and give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. And if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon, and we'll see you next time.